Um, do the applicants have any additional comments, questions that you'd like to add? No, you pretty well covered it. He, he does did. a good job at that, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he did. It, I always get the information from you guys. Yeah. So. Um, is there anyone else in the audience regarding this topic? No nope. questions from commission members. Uh, Jerry, I make a motion to approve, subject to staff recommendations. A second. Motion second. Final comments. Seeing none. All those in favor of approval, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you. Great. Next is application for conditional use with exceptions by caliber collision to operate out of 645 South Taylor Drive. Steve? Sounds good. Uh, Brett Flory is here. And just wanted to apologize again, Brett. Brett's coming in from Texas, so we didn't have a quorum last time. So I just wanted to appreciate the fact that you came back again today. So sorry about that. And no same problem. to the Fletchers and everyone that we didn't have a quorum last time. So I apologize for that. Um, what we're taking a look at is the 645 South Taylor Drive property, and that property is the former Napa Auto Parts store, so that is um, directly be, uh, behind Culver's to the east of Quick Trip and Quick Trip's car wash. Um, I'll get a site right there, so if you can if, uh, show that on screen, if at all possible, it kind of give an idea where that's at. Thank you. So you can kind of see where they're at. Um, Caliber... Uh, construction works with most of the major insurance companies and they in, in per their demographics they've indicated that this is an, uh, a site in Sheboygan would work well for them. Caliber is a nation's leading collision repair providing known for excess, exceptional customer service. Every facility is well kept clean and maintained and they consider themselves a neighborhood service and like to be located in uh, near their customers. Their proposed use is an auto body and repair shop with fenced outdoor vehicle storage. All services shall be performed within the enclosed building and all repair activities will be conducted indoors and completely screened from the public view. All parts, materials, and equipment shall be stored within the enclosed building and there's no visible equipment, parts, and materials outside. Um, all vehicles received for repair will remain behind the fence uh, in the area and when we take a look at, I'll get to the site plan. What we're looking at is You can see, excuse me one second, this area in here is where the, the area that will be fenced where the vehicles that are to be repaired, waiting to be repaired, will uh, be parked in this area. It will be screened with uh, a, a, a fence with the uh, slats so that you will not be able to see that. So it's just in that section over here. This will remain customer parking. Um, I think what I'll do is these are some aerials showing the new colors of the facility. So you see Culver's and the driveway to the car wash and Quick Trip over here. They'll paint it. They'll add some signage. They're screening some of the mechanicals that we'll talk about. And then you can see the fenced in area that's in here for the vehicles that are going to be serviced. Buildings approximately 10,000 square feet. There's approximately 42 parking spaces. Hours are typically 7.30 to 5.30 Monday through Friday. And the total number of full-time employees on the site is approximately 18. And I'm sure you might be able to talk some of the salaries and things like that, maybe Brett, if you wouldn't mind. Um, another uh, point that I might have you touch on a little bit is the um, operating procedure and how customer vehicles are processed through the caliber facility. So I'll let you talk about that in just a minute, how that gets done. Um, other than that, uh, applicant states following about the improvements to the site and building pro project will revitalize the existing building. Um, they're repainting, resealing the concrete and restriping, adding the six foot tall chain link fence, adding a metal gate in there, um, two overhead doors in that, in that uh, south uh, area over here, allowing for the cars to be uh, placed into the building. A few uh, new mechanical units that you can see on the top here, which they are shown that the mechanical units are screened and they, and they are adding some exterior building signage. They'll have to submit their building permits. Interior work is just renovating the existing office, um, renovating the existing shop and adding a uh, detail bay. Let's see here. It's 
So it just kind of shows how the detail-based spray boosts and how the cars come in. So this is the interior layout right here. Work estimated value is about 800,000. The biggest concern staff has with Caliber, and we've talked back and forth, and the applicants can speak to this, is uh, the ventilation of the spray booths. We've talked a little bit about that. They have different ways of uh, stacking their um, mechanicals, and they've gone with low profile, meaning they could have had stacks that were 10 feet, but they're bringing them down to four feet, and that's when you see the photos, you can see that all of them are, um, uh, let's see, Sorry here, got too many things going on. All right, well, anyways, they're screened, you saw that already. And so that was, so minimizing those uh, rooftop screen, outdoor storage vehicles, uh, that those are gonna be enclosed in that fenced area. Not sure what they're looking at as far as dumpster enclosures. Um, we can talk a little bit about that. There's a little bit of garbage on the east side. They haven't gone through. I'm sure they're gonna clean up some of that. And I didn't know offhand, Brett, and I'm not sure if you have any comments on this, but there's kind of a large um, drain pipe on the uh, south side of that building. And I just didn't know offhand if you guys were going to be like doing anything with that or if you could talk about that. So other than that, staff was recommending approval of the proposal and the applicants here and can talk a little bit more about the process. Cool. Any additional comments you'd like to add? Yeah, my name is Brett Flory. I'm with Cross Architects and I've done most of Caliber's work across the country over the last 10 years. Um, they just opened their 1500 store. They've got over 25,000 employees and they're growing. Um, they started on the West Coast and they've kind of just getting up into this area the past few years. but. Um, Anyway, Steve did pretty well covered everything, but um, I will say that the employee uh, salary wise, the average painter makes over 100, starts out making over $100,000 a year. Some of them make two or $300,000 a year. Um, they have tech, most of the technicians make, you know, the 70 to 80, $90,000 a year range. And then they have helpers. And of course the office staff doesn't make that much, but. Um, they work with all the major insurance companies. All the work will be done inside the building. And um, the paint booths we're going to be using on this project are from Global Finishing Systems. They're from here in Wisconsin, and they're the world's largest um, spray booth manufacturer. And Caliber uses all top-of-the-line equipment. They're the industry leader uh, in their field. And um, this one will have, uh, has two-stage filtration, which I have some documentation I provided, but basically the air coming out of the stacks as the exhaust duct is cleaner than the air you breathe just walking down the street. And they have ways to increase that even more, um, but so far we've never had to do that. This, this works really good. And um, we will be screening all the rooftop mechanical equipment and including the paint booth st uh, stacks, which we're, like he said, we're doing the low profile duct, which comes up and goes over instead of goes straight up. So we'll have 10 foot separation between the intake and the exhaust like we need to per code. But um, all the work's inside the building and they're, you know, they're not gonna be seeing, the way they operate is preferably that what they do is they'll have cars come in by appointment if the car is drivable and the customer can drive it back home and come back when their parts are ready. So it's not sitting around, especially now that it's harder to get parts nowadays. Um, especially with this is kind of a small shop for them, but so they'll have to really um, and work with the insurance companies to manage that, which they're good at. And um, if a car comes in on a flatbed wrecker, it will, um, they'll have room for that. But um, so that's why they'll try to have customers come in and just bring their car in by appointment if they can when the parts are ready. But um, I'm happy to answer any questions or tell you as much as you want to know about sure. their operation. Um, question from commission members, Jerry. Thank you, Mayor. A couple of things. One, the pipe along the side of the building, you were going to address that. Uh, what are we doing with that one? Is that a storm pop, Steve? I think so. it looks to me that it's storm right on that uh, grass area, I right behind it. I just, I walked back there, but I didn't walk all the way around it. So I'll take a look at that. If it's broken or needs to be repaired somehow, whenever we just, you know send our plans in for permit, we'll we'll repair it. We'll do whatever it takes to make yeah. it. Yeah, just it wasn't sure what it was. Yeah, 
It's probably a storm path. Okay. Uh, second thing, it's a great repurpose of the site. The question I've always had with this building with the quick trip car wash line going through there, especially when it stacks back on a, a nice day after a rainy day, is that going to propose po pose a problem for you? It doesn't seem like it with the appointment system you have set up, but there's not a lot of room to wiggle in there. Yeah, I know. Um, there is room to pull a car into up to that service door mm -hmm. and stage it there with um, being out of that drive lane for the the car wash stacking. So I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, we haven't talked to the car wash people yet, but <laughs> um, I'm sure they'll be able to manage it, whatever, kind of, if, if it gets too busy over there. But we are going to cut in another door on the other side of the building. Okay. So we'll have cross access through there. So if one side gets busy, they could still get in and out of the building on the other side. Great. Uh, with that, I'd make a motion to approve subject to recommendations. Motion second. Any discussion? Ryan? Yeah, my question is what what, uh, what about the dumpster enclosure? Are you going to keep that inside the building or is that going to be in that fenced area? There is an existing dumpster enclosure out there. It looks like it's CMU okay. um, with gates. It's right next to our fence. So um, we're planning on reusing that. Just using that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Other comments from commission members? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of approval, please state aye. aye. Any opposition, chair votes aye, that's approved. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. All right, application for precise implementation plan by South Pier Family Investments LLC to construct the second phase of South Pier Riverfront condominiums located at South Pier Drive along South Pier Drive. Steve? Yes, all right, thank you. Um, Toby Watson is here, and we are taking a look at uh, South Pier Family Investments, and this is the second phase of the condos on the South Pier. Um, in October of 2001, the plan commission had approved uh, the original drawings for the second phase. Um, since that time, the applicant indicates that the cost and the time frame involved in obtaining a lot of the materials required the owner to reconsider the previously approved project and submit a new design. Um, as you can recall, phase one was recently completed and almost occupied. It is a four-story building featuring 21 dwelling units and enclosed on-grade parking. Phase two is gonna be a complimentary four-story building featuring 15 dwelling units, and that's the one that is being changed now. Phase two is now going to be a three-story building, so it's stepping down a story in height and featuring six townhome units with the first floor uh, garage parking for each of the individual units. Five units will have four bedrooms th with three and a half bathrooms and will be 3,000 square feet. The six unit will be 30, uh, 3,700 square feet, three bedrooms and three and a half bedrooms. Bathrooms, each unit will have an outdoor deck on the second and third floor, and each unit has its own individual entry. Um, the second building for the South Pier apartment, or uh, South Pier development will be different in design, but similar in terms of materials and colors. Uh, the building will be located and fit in the footprint that was previous, previously approved as part of phase one. The targeted unit prices will range from approximately $499,000 and the estimated value of the phase two building and site improvements will be about $3 million. Um, one of the similar things that we had discussed last time is that there's a significant amount of utilities that will be required on that north side of the property. So the applicant will be responsible for that and the applicant will work with the city engineering department with regards to sidewalk along the fish cleaning station and South Pier Drive. And uh, other than that, staff was recommending approval of the proposed uh, conditional use permit subject to the uh, conditions you have before you. And I can't answer any questions. The applicants are here, and I'm not sure if there's any neighbors there. Cool. Toby, additional comments? No. Steve did a wonderful job summarizing exactly what we're looking to do. Cool. Questions from commission members? Jerry? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, we looked at this at architecture review, and I believe the architect did a great job representing what the owner wanted and blended it into what's going on there. Um, I, I, the profile of the building, that was one of the first, in the first building, that was one of the, I guess, barriers that some of the neighbors had because it was so high. So being a, a floor lower is only gonna help you, especially with the neighbors. But I make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendation. Cool. 
second. second. Motion and multiple seconds. Uh, Take your pick. Yeah. Um, final comments, thoughts, concerns from commission members? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition, chair votes aye, that item is approved. Thank you, gentlemen, appreciate Thank it. You. All right, moving along. Uh, application number nine for conditional use permit with exceptions by uh, Judy Moncree, if I said that right, to yeah. operate One Nest Child Care Center in a multi-tenant family located at 90, excuse me, 509B Superior Avenue. Steve? Yeah. All right, thanks, Judy Moncree here, and she's looking at look, opening One Nest Child Care at 509 Superior Avenue, as you said. This is the 2,000 square foot tenant space that's located at the southwest corner of the property. So kind of in the background in that area. Child care services will be provided to children varying age from three weeks to 12 years old. The tenant space will be prepared for about 30 to 40 children and indoor activities will include math, reading, writing, exercises, eating and naps. Uh, there's uh, an area that uh, we'll talk about a little bit more that we've spoken, uh, Ms. Moncrief and I, about the outdoor playground area. There's an area that's uh, at the back side of the building, and this is located within the parking lot, and we'll uh, talk about that in just a minute. Business hours will be from 5 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, and 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, and there will be two shifts. Um, the applicant will need to work with the building inspection department regarding the occupancy permit that will be involved in uh, occupying and operating from the site. Um, they'll need to uh, submit the required permits and license required to operate the daycare facility from the state. It's kind of a catch-22 situation where they need to get approvals from the city before the state will inspect and, and certify. So that's uh, one of the things we're talking about. I think the, the biggest issue that uh, uh, Judy and I were speaking about was the uh, uh, proposed um, playground area. Yeah. And, and initially, there was discussion that it might be placed right on the alley. Actually, could you go to this one right here? And then this one. And so on this picture, you can kind of see that it's outlined in the black, kind of a 20 by 20 space. So originally, it was uh, located adjacent to the alley, and both Judy had concerns as well as I in terms of being having a playground with young children right on the alley. Subsequent to those discussions, the idea was to move that playground area inside that you can kind of see the green space at the very, at the alley, and the applicant was gonna talk to the owner to see if they could put some additional mulch in that other parking area. They would fence that, and, and so some of the things that staff had concerns is, is just the parking area and the traffic and things like that. So one of the things that we, you know, staff was uh, going to put in terms of a condition is that we, at the plan commission could recommend approval of the daycare use subject to all the conditions. And one of the conditions is that the playground area, Ms. Moncrief would have to work with staff in terms of showing me exactly where it's gonna be, the fencing, and any type of things from that perspective. If it made sense, I could approve it at a staff level, unless the plan commission would say, you know what, Steve, we'd prefer to see that. And if I would have any concerns with what's being proposed, I'd bring it back to plan commission anyways. But this would allow Ms. Moncree to at least start working with the state to get inspected because there's an ability to use other playgrounds in the area uh, for six months before this needs to be installed. So staff was recommending approval subject to the conditions that you have before you. And I can answer any questions and Ms. Moncree is here as well if you need her to uh, explain anything else on that. Cool. Ms. Moncree, any additional comments that you'd like to add? Or? No, that was the only concern, the play area. Well, I'll, I'll just add some comments too. First of all, I just appreciate um, this child care facility and the work that you're doing on this. Child care is a big need in our community. Mm -hmm. So thanks for, for jumping and leading on this as well too. And I know the, the playground issue, um, that's definitely something that I believe Steve and our team can help work, work and address that. And I know we can okay. get it done, so. Yes. All right. Other comments, motions, questions from commission members? Jerry? I'll move to approve subject to staff recommendations and I'm okay with Steve reviewing the uh, playground at his staff level. I'll second that. Motion second, final comments? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of approval, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Chair votes aye, that is approved. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Next, application for conditional use with exceptions by Walmart to relocate their pickup and delivery services and to replace and install new signage at 3711 South Taylor. Steve. All right, Kevin Spurgeon is here and he's one of the architects on the project representing Walmart. I know there's a couple other individuals here with him on this, but what we're taking a look at with um, Walmart is their online grocery pickup right now their online pickup is kind of centered in the middle of the parking lot. What Walmart is proposing to do is to change that to the southwest corner of the building where their garden center is. They have a lot of high storage racking and things like that. And some of the reasons behind that is just that when people are coming to, um, to pick up their groceries, this way they won't have to go through that uh, whether it's clients or or Walmart staff won't have to cross the main uh, road that goes in front of the store. So it's much easier and safer for both uh, the customer and the uh, employees. Um, so again, they're looking at that rack area and th what they'll be doing is they'll be demolishing a little bit of the racks in that area, but there's actual concrete in there. They'll take that concrete out, asphalt it, and they will use the existing drive and they'll create 27 um, designated sp uh, parking spaces in that area. I think maybe this one. And, yep. So you can see at that southeast corner at the very bottom, you can see the 27 spaces that they're creating. You can see the um, parking sign that's in there. It says one and pick up and each one of those spaces will be de designated with uh, an individual uh, parking space number. And so basically as customers um, come for their groceries, they're indicated that there's a call number that they call and then the groceries are um, delivered in that area. So those, um, uh, there'll be, uh, like I said, 27 spaces and 27 signs for that. Um, the applicant is also states uh, uh, there's a number of signs that are gonna be proposed um, for the building. Um, I won't go through all of them, but there's a significant amount that are on the front and um, they're looking to replace a lot of them. They're in having a total of uh, 19 signs, but the overall reduction in the amount of square footage is about 278 square feet. So there is um, some charts talking about the dip, you know, there's the things with the Walmart and the Spark and the grocery and, and different things on the front of the building uh, that they're looking to replace. A lot of that's there, but like I said, the big thing with regards to the signage is the overall square footage is being reduced by 278 square feet, so that's a good thing. Cool. Um, the applicant also states uh, that they're going to be painting the facility. I think you're kind of showing those drawings. There's kind of some before and uh, after drawings there. But basically what's happening is uh, they're updating the paint colors on the building, both exterior and interior. Walmart is bringing the exterior paintable material colors up to date on the building to make it more appealing. As part of the Walmart brand identity program, Walmart's providing consistency and brand alignment across all their stores. So they're looking to update, uh, leaving the brick, but a lot of the EFIS colors you can see are changing from the browns and tans to the grays and blues. Um, the only uh, question that uh, staff had was there are some directional signage and uh, Mr. Spurgeon can probably speak to this, but uh, all through the site, there's, there's uh, five uh, uh, directional signs that are about eight and a half feet tall. Typically the maximum height for our, our directional signs is eight feet. So staff was gonna be recommending that, but uh, I would let the applicant speak to that. And um, there are a number of containers located on the um, uh, southeast corner of the site. And I know there, I, I think there's interior modeling too, and you can Correct. speak to that, but uh, there's a significant number, I think all the way down. And, um, and it's just one of those things that uh, we wanna make sure that when, if and when the project's done, that all of those are get removed from the site. So staff was recommending approval of the conditional use and I can answer any questions in the applicants here as well. Sure. Any additional comments, thoughts that you'd like to add? No, I think Steve did a great job of explaining uh, what him and I have been going over for a few weeks now. Yeah. Cool. 
Comments, questions from Commissioner? Jerry? I feel like the bad guy today. Well, I, uh, I'm, your oath was the first one to pop up. <laughs> All good. Thank you. Just a couple of things. Uh, Steve, if you could pull up the site plan again for me. On the pickup zone, is that going to be one way in and one way out, or is it just multiple uh, traffic going in and out at the same entrance and exit? So they have the ability to go towards the back of the building, but um, you are correct where it, it would be a pull in, pull out condition and, and, and not really access around the back of the building. Do you think there's enough room for people to no negotiate going in, coming back out and have enough room between either side? So I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of civil who's not, not here today, sure. but, um, and we've done this, uh, dozens, if not hundreds of times this situation. So they've, they've have this mapped out pretty well as far mm -hmm. as allowing that access, uh, in and out with enough space available. Okay, great. Uh, the only other question, just more from your internal standpoint, I believe the groceries are on the other end of the That's building, correct. so you're going to be bringing them all the way down to that end. Is that a, a logistical issue, or is it is it a logistical problem inside the store for uh, you? A lot of the uh, a lot of the stores um, are swapping sides, and it, it just it's contingent on how the access to the parking is available. And just like this one, if they have the ability to pull the parking. Um, out from the front of the building to the side, then they're willing to uh, make the change on the inside of the store. Oh, okay. Make it Great. happen. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ryan? Yeah, my question, uh, I know Steve brought up the signs are at eight foot six, and in order to be decoding, it'd be at eight foot. I assume that's not going to be a problem, right? It's not going to be a problem. Just okay. hammer them in a little deeper. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and what about the containers that Steve mentioned? Is that going to be all gone when, when the project's all finished? So, or? Um, we will probably use four. Season when gone. Chris is a store manager. If you wouldn't mind stepping up to the mic, because otherwise it doesn't pick up the recording. Thank you. Sorry about that. Chris Wagner, uh, store manager. I'm at the location. Um, the containers that you see right now are a combination of our store planning and our construction teams um, with materials to be able to use in, on the inside of the building. Um, as the project wraps up, um, those would um, completely shrink out of there. Um, we would maybe look to keep just a couple for the holiday um, freight flow that's coming in. Um, but then after that, all those would disappear as well. Thank you. Other commissioners? Other questions? Motion approved. Well, second that. Motion second. Final comments. Seeing none. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next is the preliminary plot approval for North Town in the town of Sheboygan. Steve. All right. Tom Holton is here representing the town of Sheboygan and Chris Berkland from Van Horn. Uh, basically, what we're taking a look at, this is a plat in the town, as we've seen in the past, the city has extraterritorial platting, so these plats are submitted to the city for review as well. It's an eight-lot subdivision, lots varying in size from 0 0.453 to 76 acres. It's a couple of outlots and a new town square, and North Town is located off of North 40th and Highway 42 and it's a, a pretty significant development plan. It, so staff uh, was recommending approval of the preliminary plat for the extraterritorial platting. Okay. Joe? Oh. There's been a motion, is there a second? And a second. Gentlemen, any additional comments, thoughts? No, oh, just looking forward to a nice project uh, with Van Horn. It's uh, a mixed use development, it'll benefit the whole area. Just thank you. Uh, no more mics light lit up. So all those in favor of approving, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. That item is approved. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Luck. All right. Resolution number 3222 by older persons Mitchell pursuant to the ex extra, not extraterrestrial, yes. extraterritorial <laughs> plat appro approval jurisdiction of the city of Sheboygan approving the final plat for Maywood Estate subdivision in the town of Sheboygan. Steve? All right, Ross Warner is here. And we had previously seen the preliminary plat for this. Again, this is located in the town. The city has extraterritorial platting, three miles. So this is back before us for the final plat and staff was recommending approval of the subdivision. Anything else? No, I think we'd look second time up to the bat, right? So, yeah. uh, motions, comments. Um, I'll move to approve, subject to staff recommendations. 
Second. Motion second. Final comments. Any additional ones? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval, please state aye. Aye. Any objections? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sure. So uh, Steve is just going to explain 13 and 14 together. We'll have to vote on them separately. So Steve. All right. Uh, Martha and Mike Pelzel are here, and they've been here a couple of times now. They've been looking at um, the Four Seasons move to the property on 15th Street, which is at 1444 Pershing Avenue. And so basically, one of the conditions of approval was to uh, have the Four Seasons pave the parking lot. And when you take a look at um, the drawing before you, you can see that a significant amount of the gravel parking lot was within the city right away. The city had to acquire a decent amount of right away when we did the 15th Street improvements. Uh, it's curved and guttered, and so as part of that, there were certain uh, uh, right away that was required. And I think one of the things is, I think there's a, a water line in, in some of that area. But anyways, prior to uh, the Pelzels uh, 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 purchasing it, the former owner had worked with the city to sell the property. A lot of their former parking lot was at, in the right of way. We, you know, after discussions, we looked, we saw how much was there. And so in order, one of the conditions was for the plan commission to have them pave the parking lot. They want to pave the parking lot. They want to keep people off the street. They want it on their property, but a lot of it's in the right of way. So that's why they're here today is uh, to satisfy that plan commission condition, but to also give themselves the offsite parking that, you know, appeared that they have. And, and in order to get that done, the encroachment needs to be granted. So staff was recommending approval. Cool. Any additional comments that you'd like to add? Yeah, thanks for uh, having us. Um, so I'm looking at this and the amount of square footage, I think, Steve, we determined there's a one-time fee of $1.50 per square foot for this right-of-way area. Yeah. My question is, is I'm wondering if we can negotiate that due to the large amount of square footage that this encompasses and a lot of it um, being we're going to asphalt it and we're going to maintain it and we're going to remove snow from it. I'm wondering if there's negotiation in that, that one-time fee just from, the, from our standpoint, the large cost that we're incurring to apply for this. So that's set up by ordinance and in order to negotiate that, it's gonna to have to be an ordinance change through the council. And I can tell you that that's probably very unlikely because there's a lot of people that pay these encroachment fees and we would probably be opening up Pandora's box to do that. So um, you can talk to your alderman and see if they're willing to bring something forward, but it would require an ordinance change. Okay. Jokingly, I say this, will the city remove the snow from that area for us? <laughs> Probably not. <so. laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, <laughs> contact your older person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Call them first. <laughs> okay. Then I don't really have anything else at this time. Okay. Right. Motions, comments from commission members? The only other, Steve? The only other thing, you know, they're adding some green space. Mm -hmm. um, they're freshening up the building. You know, this is the type of things that we wanted when we invested in 15th Street was to try to get some of the businesses to improve and freshen things up. So this is uh, certainly doing that. So that's, uh, we, we love appreciate a good freshen that. Up, right? Yeah. Yes. It'll be painted by the end of the year as well. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Jerry? Just make a motion to approve subject to recommendations. Second. Motion second. Final comments? Seeing none. All those in favor of approval, please state aye. 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 Any objections? Seeing none. 13 is approved. Thanks. 14 was the similar conversation, but it's a general ordinance. Um, so general ordinance number 4, 22-23 by Alder Persons Feldy, granting M squared properties and its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon the described portions of 1444 Pershing Avenue in the city of Sheboygan for the purposes of creating an asphalt driveway and parking lot. Uh, Same it. item that was discussed. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion second. Final comments. Seeing none. All those in, in favor of approving it, please state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. 14 is approved. Thank right. you both. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. 15 and 16, Steve will describe together. So first is 15 RO number 232223 by the city clerk submitting communications from Grateful Properties LLC requesting an encroachment on the property located at 340, 342 South Pier Drive for the purpose of adding an outdoor seating deck. Steve? Um, 
Sam Leroy is here from Quash's Construction. Basically what we had was we had looked at this once before and then an encroachment was granted. The, the deck got constructed a little wider than what we had approved. So basically what they're doing is coming back and uh, 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 asking for a little bit more property so that the deck is all within the encroachment area. There's area to do that and staff is recommending approval. I'll make that motion. Motion second. Sam, anything else to add? No, I think that covers it. Cool. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Thank you. I, the mayor's got a question, though. When are they opening? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> they can't open one, one day before the July 4th? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> they can get I'll a lot of business this it. weekend. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to them about it. Maybe Twist we can get a July 4th opening. There we go. Right there. Hey, hey, patriotic. Good, there good first go. opening there. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right, there's been a motion and second to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Chair votes aye. 15 is approved. 16 is the same item. General Ordinance Number 322223 by Elder Persons Prella, replacing General Ordinance Number 392122, granting Harbor Cafe LLC and its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon certain portions of 3040, 3042 South Pier Drive in the City of Sheboygan, granting Grateful Properties LLCs and accessors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon the expand portions of 3040, 3042 South Pier Drives as described in the city of Sheboygan for the purposes of adding outdoor seating deck. Move to approve. Second. Motion second. Any conversations? None. All those in favor of approving, please state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. That item is approved. Next meeting, July 17th. We've exhausted the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, July 12th. To adjourn. No, oh, July 12th, excuse me. Yeah. Motion second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. We're adjourned at 4.41. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.